Hi, welcome to Live Big. I'm Derek Greer. Today we're going to dig into one of Jesus' most important parables. And that's not just my words. He actually says this. And, and you're going to learn how to keep your heart sweet when everything else goes sour. I want you to watch this. Luke chapter 8 and verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, Jesus' popularity had just skyrocketed. I mean, it went absolutely through the roof. Everyone was talking about this new rabbi that was performing miracles, casting out demons, and speaking like no man in history had ever spoke. And they had come to uh, him from every city, a lot like what happens uh, here every week. People, you know, came from everywhere because the voices in your life affect the choices of your life. And it's vital who you listen to. And hearing God's voice regularly is more important than the food you eat, the car you drive, the house you live in, or, or maybe even the friends you might lose because of it. And it is amazing, though, how, you know, when, when you put God first, everything else kind of just falls into place. And the people came. The Bible says, and he spoke by a parable. Now, most people would have been so enamored by the crowd, so excited that people finally came out to listen. They would have tripped over their own feet trying to make the crowd happy, trying to keep the crowd present. But when the masses came to Jesus, he didn't just look at the crowd, he looked through the crowd. And he saw what the crowd needed most. And he spoke all the things he could have said. He could have razzle-dazzled them with, with the incredible speech. I mean, he could, he could have done a lot of things. But in this setting, he spoke by a parable. Now, all a parable is, is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. That's all it is. And what Jesus, he, Jesus was, was, was brilliant at this. He, he, he would uh, use parables to help people get into the story and outside of their religious boxes. And at first, you know, a parable just sounds like any other story. It just sounds like, a, you know, an everyday common happening. And that's why we can all identify with them. But, but, but a parable keeps something up its sleeve. And then it suddenly kind of pops out and then knocks you flat. And by the time it's over, it leaves you thinking, I never saw that thing like that before. You know, I, I, never, I never understood that thing the, the, the way now I, I, I do. And he begins his parable. He said, a sower went out to sow his seed. Now, in the first century, seed was first sown, and then the ground was tilled or turned over, and then the seed kind of went into the ground. Now, nowadays, in the 21st century, uh, we, we turn the soil first, and then we plant. So as you listen to this parable, you, you need to put yourself back in a time that Jesus spoke and recognize that, again, the farmer would take a whole bunch of seed and just cast it, then they turn the soil. Very different than today. And if you understand that, the parable begins to make a whole lot more sense. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it, verse 6. Some fell on a rock, and as soon as, uh, as it, it was uh, planted, it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Seven. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. Now, I want you to imagine reaching the height of your popularity. You have waited over 30 years, or almost 30 years, to enter ministry. I want you to imagine going to church and being Jesus. Now, you, you think it's hard sometimes listening to me. I know some folks got a whole bunch of uh, stuff to say. Uh, but imagine being Jesus, knowing the Word of God perfectly, and having to sit through a rabbi getting it wrong, and doing this every week for a lifetime. Because the Bible said that when, when he opened the scroll to read, when they, they, they actually they got mad at him after this moment, uh, as his custom was, he was in the synagogue, which meant Jesus went to church every week. How many of y'all want to be like Jesus? I didn't see any hands there. I didn't see any, any. Yeah. 
If you want to be like Jesus, you need to come to church. Well, he's at the height of his popularity. People have walked long distances. They left their farms. They left their jobs. They left their family behind. And again, everybody is on foot. Few people have uh, donkeys to, to, to take them where, where, where they're going. And, and I mean, this is a big deal. You know, people have things to do. And, and people, you know, if you didn't take care of yesterday, you didn't eat the next day. So this was serious to take a day out to listen to a rabbi. So, so here they are. And they've come all these, these various distances. And, 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 and he tells a riddle about paths, about birds, and about thorns. And surely the crowd is thinking, come on, Jesus, you can do better than this. And when he had said these things, because he knew exactly what everyone was thinking, instead of backing off his, his story, he leaned, leaned in. And actually, the Bible says he cried out. Letting people know, I'm not backing down. God gave me a word for you, and I'm going to deliver this word. And never let people's first reactions talk you out of what God has for you to share. That's important. Because if God has really spoken, folks will come around. It might take a little time, but folks will come around. And then Jesus said this, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. You see, the problem was not the story Jesus just told. The problem was not what Jesus had just said. The problem was the level of their listening. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Have you ever had a discussion with somebody? I mean, you, you, you're trying to talk to them, but you, you know the ears work fine, but you know they, they refuse to hear you. This was the situation Jesus was in. People wanted to be entertained. Pe pe people wanted to see something thrilling. But Jesus came to deliver a truth. And he said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, Jesus, again, was not concerned about the ears on the head, but the ears in the heart. In fact, this is the problem in our nation right now. Everybody's talking, but nobody's listening. You know, one of the, the, the sincerest ways to, 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 to show someone respect is to genuinely listen to what they are trying to say. Then his disciples asked him, saying, so Jesus, lots of opinions about the story you just told. What does this parable mean? Some farmers were like, well, you know, Jesus is probably telling us we waste too much seed as we cast the seed the way we do. Maybe some politicians were, were thinking as they listen, you know, maybe he's hinting that, that maybe that, that, that there needs to be better farm subsidies. And, and the journalist, he might have been thinking, you know what, maybe the, the, Jesus is trying to tell me there's a big story uh, in, in how the birds are impacting the farming community. And Ray Ray was out there too. Ray Ray, <laughs> he, he was out there and he was thinking, maybe I need to hook up with a, with a farm girl because 25% of them do pretty well. So, <laughs> so all this is going on in, in the minds of the people. So the people, or the disciples here, asked Jesus for a little bit of uh, understanding. Lord, show me what the, what, what, what the story's all about. And then he said this. He said, to you, not to everybody, but to you. Those who don't quit when they don't first or don't quickly understand. Some truths take a minute before you understand them. Some lessons take a little while to learn. And if you're impatient with the things of God, you can find yourself walking away prematurely from things that can absolutely change your life. So it was the men that were closest to Jesus that asked this question. And there's value in being close to Jesus. He said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it's given in parables. That seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. This is important. The same sun that softens wax hardens clay. The same message that blesses a heart 
will harden the insincere. See, everyone had an idea about what this parable meant. And, and I'm sure in some way they got some value out of it and applied it to their lives. But Jesus only gave the keys to the closest. Pay attention to what I'm saying. If you want keys, if you want answers, if you want to understand what other folks don't understand, if you really want to know what people are only taking a stab at, you need to stay close. And by the way, if you're not close to God, God's not the one who moved. So, so Jesus explains to his disciples, and he starts with only one key. Now, the parable is this. So in a parable, there's always a main point. It's not a, an allegory where everything means something. There's, there's usually a few driving points in the parable. So in order to unlock the parable for, for his disciples, he gives them the main point. He said, now the parable, the key is this. This one sentence was about to unlock the whole thing, and the tiniest key can unlock the biggest and the greatest doors. And if you come close today, God's about to unlock some things. If you pay attention today, and not just eat here with the ears on your head, but here in your heart, God's about to unlock something. And here's the key. He said, the seed in my story is the Word of God. Now, he used something everyone understood. He used something everyone was familiar with. He used something that if sown under the right conditions would solve problems that people have. He says, the Word of God is not about just getting a shout. The Word of God is not just about getting a few amens. The Word of God is about producing something productive, something valuable. You hear what I'm saying? Farmers worked all day, sun up, sunset, to make sure their crops were in order. And what he was saying is the Word of God, just like the seed that's sown and needs to be taken care of by the farmer, if you tend to it properly, it will feed you, it will take care of you, it will clothe you, it will do everything you need it to do, but it all depends on how you hear. He said the seed is the Word of God. And this is why the devil will fight you tooth and nail, to keep you, out, keep you out of an environment such as this. Because our weekly focus stays on God's Word. Why? Because that's where my help comes from. You hear what I'm saying? That's where my answers lie. And he goes on to explain the parable. He says, with this key, now you can understand everything else. And here's the deal. We come to church and get our shout. We come to church, we get our song. But my Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. And we, at some point, got to come around God's table to begin to understand his word. And Jesus now is laying out the importance of God's word. And he said, those by the wayside, remember my story, guys. This is the soil that has been hardened by the footsteps of people. And all of us have been stepped on at one point in our lives or the other. People will hurt you, then turn around and hate you and, and act like you the one that hurt them. But don't let life's hard lessons harden you. One of the greatest battles, hear me dear love, one of the greatest battles you will fight in your life is keeping your heart tender, keeping your heart sweet, keeping your heart soft in the midst of bitter disappointments. He said, those by the wayside, he's about to talk about 
four categories of people, four categories of hearers, four categories of live streamers, four categories of church attenders. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, those who have been hurt so many times and a hardness, a cynicism begins to, to step in and, and set in to try to, and, and it's all designed in your mind to, to protect you from getting hurt or, or wounded again. But instead of shielding you like you think it promises, actually it only makes you better pray. So that hard heart, that one who let life cause them to become bitter, they hear, but then the devil comes. Why? Because like a vulture, he watches for the limp. Like a vulture, he smells wounds. He smells infection. He smells pain. He smells fear. They are ones who hear, but then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Because the devil, unlike us, knows God's word is the only way out. So he squeezes where it hurts. He stirs memories and images of, 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 of disappointments, discouragement, all, all the pain, all the hurt, everything that's gone wrong, every moment of despair, so that we keep our walls up, our defenses up, we keep our ground hard. So I'm not going to let nobody, even God, hurt me like that again. Nothing's going to penetrate this hard surface. Nothing's going to take a root in my life and, and make me vulnerable again like they did last time. So the devil comes, he takes the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. I'm going to say something so simple. If you catch it, it'll set you free. Satan breaks your heart for a reason. I know that went right over your head. Satan hurt you for a reason. He was working on something. He didn't just hurt you because he didn't have nothing to do. He's working on something. He's trying to get you to reject the answer. He's trying to get you to walk away from the only thing that can help. Satan is, is smarter than you think, and he has a strategy. Every pain in your life was designed with a purpose in mind as far as the devil's concerned. And we're talking about wayside people, wayside people, wayside people. But the ones on the rock, this soil's different than the soil, you know, here in this part of the country where, you know, my backyard's full of rocks and all the rest, you know, and, it, you know, it's, rocks are usually round little things. Every now and then you have a big rock. But in Israel, just inches beneath the surface, there was was, 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 was rocks of limestone, literal tables, if you will, just inches under the, the, the soil. And you couldn't see it with, with the naked eye. Um, the, the sower wasn't being irresponsible. He couldn't see. And by the way, the sower sowing seed, and, and the deal is, uh, you know, the wind took some to the path. He's not being a bad farmer. He's doing what he's supposed to because he knows the plow will eventually come and sow it under. And sometimes you get a word before you understand it, by the way. Every message, you're not going to get like that. Some messages require some plowing before it gets unlocked in, in, our, in our souls. Let, let's keep going. Those on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. How many of you know joy is a good thing? Yeah, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in him always. This group, at least they receive the word. They haven't been so hardened by life. They, they can hear a preacher. They can walk into a door of a church, and, and they could be around others. So uh, they, they, they receive the word with joy, and they're good during the honeymoon. But when they're up to their elbows and diapers and bills, they start looking for the door. And these have no root. 
On the outside, they look like great people. On the surface, they look like they're, they're, they're really uh, growing in the Lord. But underneath, there's a hardness that no one else but God can see. And they're not going to let anyone come too close or let anything go too deep. And these have no root. And w- watch what happens with this group. They believe for a while. They come to church for a while. They live stream for a while. But then something happens. How many of y'all know something's bound to happen? No matter where you go, wherever there's people, there's going to be problems. Everything's good for a, a while. But in time of testing, you will find paths with no obstacles often don't lead anywhere great. You know you've passed the faith test, when you, de- when, you, when you don't get what you want, but you can thank God anyway. And this group, they begin to walk with God for a season. It's a genuine smile on their face. They have a genuine encounter with God. But when testing comes, when problems come, when conflicts comes, when they don't get their way, they fold on the rocks, on the rocks. Can anyone say on the rocks? Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who when they have heard, third group, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life. These are people who, whose hearts are soft. These are people who are even willing to go deep with God. There's, there's no rock under the surface. But the problem is they get distracted on the way to grandma's house. They're choked with cares, worries, news, current events. Riches, everything is about getting what's next for me and mine. And pleasures, I just want to be happy of life. And what happens is as the thorns compete for the nutrients that are in the soil, the weeds or the thorns, the competing interest consumes the limited time, the limited strength, a limited energy, and we can't focus anymore. The, the thing we was, we were, that, that we really wanted to, to bloom and blossom cannot bloom and blossom because we've been distracted on the way to grandmother's house. The easiest way is important to destroy a vision is not first opposition. Just give the person a second vision to distract them from the first. I just said a mouthful. You used to focus on her, but things happen. You used to focus on him, but things happen. The way to destroy a vision is to plant another vision. And there was a time God was first. But then the blessings of God came in your life. And you got busy maintaining the blessing. You got busy maintaining the things and forgot the person who gave you the things. Will anyone come back to church next week? We're almost there, and I'm going to cut you, and then I'm going to heal you, and we're going to close you up, and I'm going to let you go. And because of competing interests, they bring forth no fruit, or they bring no fruit to maturity. They stay for a while, right when the fruit's going to really bring some value into their lives. They get sidetracked. But some other shiny thing 
along the way. Say it with me, among the thorns, among the thorns, among the thorns. But there's hope. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word, will watch the difference with a good and noble heart. Jesus just gave the second key. The first key was that the seed represented God's word. The final key, though, is the soil represents the heart. The problem's never in the seed. The issue's always in my and your hearts. And if we can just soften our soil, if we can just go a little bit deeper, if we can just get rid of some of the distractions in life, The promises of God can be ours. But the ones that fell on good ground implying the others are bad ground. And here's the deal. And and you might not, you might feel a little discouraged at this point because like, well, I see myself in in, in each of these areas and and, and like, you know, am am I the the, the hard, you know? But here's the deal. In, In each of our lives, in different areas, we have hardness. And we're like the path. We won't hear God's message. I'm not, don't, don't talk about, don't, man, she was too long in that offering piece. I don't, don't talk about money and giving in the church. I'm, I'm done with that. that. That might be your area. But then you might have another area where, 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 where maybe you, 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 you can, can, can worship, but don't let them get too long. Don't, don't go too deep with it. Don't, 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 don't go too high. Don't let nobody start dancing and praising and shouting like, like God saved their life last week. Don't, don't let none of that happen. So on the surface, it's all good, but don't go too deep. But then there's another area in your life where, where, where you were doing the right things, man. You, you're going deep with it, and, and you, you're tender. But you got distracted. The care, this world will suck the life out of you and spit you out. The cares of this world, trying to run with the neighbors, trying to be like everybody else, and trying to fit in and, and your circle of all that is going to choke out the life. All your energy, all your thought life was no longer focused on meditating on God's word, but meditating on what that person did, what that person said, or the thing you need. And you find yourself in church. I mean, a heart, a real heart, but not bearing fruit. And again, there's different parts of our lives that function different ways. And I'm hard to certain things. I also know certain things I don't want to go deep. I also know in some areas I'm distracted. But I I look at a parable like this and say, Lord, make me good ground. Father, make me good soil. I confess this, Lord. I bring this up, this area up before you. I'm sorry about my way. By the way, all this was in a little story. Jesus told that a lot of folks didn't think it was very clever. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word, with a noble and good heart. If you get the the right seed in the the, the, the right heart in the right conditions, it will do what it's supposed to do every time. But here's here's the part, and I'm going to let you go. This is the part I don't like. I wish I could modify the book sometimes. I wish he said, well, you were good ground, man. It's just going to happen for you. It's just going to happen for you. Everything's just going to be wonderful. But Jesus tells the truth. The good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart. That's good. Now get your hearts right and everything. Keep it and bear fruit. But watch this. Here's here's this word. Here's, Here's this ugly word. Ugly word. Ugly. With patience. Like, Lord, how are you, how you going to mess all that up <laughs> by adding endurance and patience and hanging in there, implying that there's going to be time between the, 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 the point the seed is planted and the harvest? And God, I'm impatient. I'm, I'm only here for a short time. I got people to meet and things to do. 
But he said, there's good ground. It's not enough to be good ground. It says, you will only bear with patience, perseverance, meaning even if you have the best heart, it's still going to take time. You're still going to have to hang in there. You're still going to have to hold on. You're still going to have to possess yourself and discipline yourself. You know, you, you're still, you know, and, and here's the deal. When, when, when you, you, you're good ground, you, you know, Lord, I, 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 I've given my heart to this thing. I've prayed and I've I, I fasted, Lord. I've cried. I've repented, Lord. I sought you, God. I, I've changed, Lord, and, and I've tried to do what you wanted me to do, God. And when others got bitter, God, I forgave, God. When, when others wouldn't go deep, Lord, I went all the way. I, I went beyond the, the point of return, Lord. I, I went as deep as I can go. And, and Lord, when others got distracted, Lord, when others started doing other things, everything but what they supposed to do, Lord, you know I hung in there, God. You know I did, Lord. What, 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 what you called me to do, what you wanted me to do, God. And that ought to be enough, God. But, but Jesus said, he said, let those roots go in the ground. We, 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 the bigger the tree, the deeper the roots. And if you're about to handle a storm, you need to have some roots. And sometimes my spiritual journey, and, and I'm, I'm sure that that's no different than, than, than your. Sometimes this is what it looks like. My roots are just holding on. My roots are just holding on. And God is saying, if you want to get to where I want to take you, you're going to have to learn to hold on. It's not just going to fall out of the sky. It's not going to happen in the next five minutes. You got to learn to get deeply rooted and hang on till God shows up. I know where my help comes from, but let me tell you something. Weeping may endure for a night, but I got to get to morning. Joy comes in the morning. I got to make it through the night. You got to hold on if you're going to have that hundredfold. People say to me, Bishop, I want what you got. Well, you got to go through what I went through. If you can hold on, you hear what I'm saying? When everybody's talking about you, when, when people are laughing at you, make fun of you, friends turn, if you can hold on, God's no respect of persons. If you would just stay rooted, he will keep me from falling if I just hold on to God. In this little story, that Jesus, people were a little disappointed that Jesus told. The whole message, hold on. Have a heart that sticks with it, that sticks to it. And here's the deal. Stuff may happen, I'm not letting go of my God. Now, if you heard what Jesus is teaching us today, disappointments in life are absolutely inevitable. All of us are gonna deal with them at one point in our lives or another, but it's how we handle such moments that makes all the difference in our lives. Now, be sure to continue to dig into messages like the ones you heard today so that you have the Word of God in your heart to power through these very, very challenging times. Ultimately, as Jesus taught us, God's Word is the key. I'd like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray right now over everyone that's tuned into this broadcast, and I don't believe anyone has done it by accident. I pray right now, Father, you illuminate your word in their heart. Father, I pray that the word they need for the situation that they're going through, uh, just like Jesus taught in the parable, that the word of God is the seed, that you would speak that word so that they would have a seed that will become the solution to their problem and issue right now, Father, 
open eyes again, illuminate hearts, that we hear your voice, illuminate the scripture that's appropriate for the, the, the issue that, that is so on the minds of those that are, are listening today. And I give you all the honor for what you accomplish, and we all say amen. The third edition of Live Big Magazine is here now and it is available. I want you to get your copy. It's a premium resource designed to help you uh, live big in key areas of your life, such as your faith, business, mental health, and a whole lot more. Best of all, this ma magazine, watch this, it's available to you free of charge. That's right, we'll even pay for shipping. So stay tuned, our announcement's coming shortly with more details. We want to tell you about something that we're really, really excited about. It's Live Big Magazine. Live Big Magazine is a free quarterly magazine featuring premium articles from Derek Greer and other expert contributors. It's all designed to help you live bigger in key areas of your life, such as faith, business, mental health, parenting, and a whole lot more. The good news is that it's absolutely free with no strings attached. We'll even pay for shipping. All you have to do is go to DerekGreer.com forward slash magazine. That's DerekGreer.com forward slash magazine to claim your free subscription today. Before I go, and this is important, I wanna take a moment to tell you about my latest book, When God Stops. Now, I spent a lot of midnight hours, you know, late into the morning or early into the morning, I spent hours writing this book just for you. And in it, I delve into eight biblical figures that Jesus literally stopped for. Now, Jesus had a lot of places to go, people to meet and, and things he had to preach, but he stopped for these folks, he healed them and answered their prayers. And if you wanna learn how to get Jesus to stop for you, tap into folks that were successful doing. Also in this book, I talk about how Jesus stopped for me, this young, crazy 20 year old man that needed Jesus more than anything else in his life. And I, I talk about uh, my story and some of the things God has done for me. So if you're looking for God to jumpstart your faith and, and see what it takes to get God to stop in your situation to address uh, your life and, and the needs in your life, get your copy of this book. My announcer is coming with more information. And until next time, live big. Question, how do you get God to stop for you and give special attention to your situation? What does it take to stand out in the crowd and get God-sized results? Find the answers to these questions and more in Derek Greer's latest book, When God Stops. This one-of-a-kind book highlights eight hidden figures from the Bible who show us how to dream, think, and live the type of life that God not only notices, but one that He rewards. Not only that, but in this book, Derek Greer shares his personal journey like he never has before. Hear his testimony and go beyond what you see to get the real story behind Derek Greer's most life-changing moments with God. So jumpstart your faith today. Learn how to get God's special attention and see God-sized results in your life. Go to whengodstops.com today. That's whengodstops.com to find out more. Derek Greer Ministries is certified by the ECFA. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Live Big with Derek Greer.